Hi everybody, so today we're gonna to be talking more about the uh, inner ear, and I've already done videos on the cochlea, and I've done videos on the uh, organic corti. Today I'm gonna to talk about the vestibular apparatus, and specifically, I'm gonna be talking about the utricle and saccule and how we determine motions, or how we sense motions in linear planes, as well as in the vertical plane. So let's go ahead and take a look, and just to review, you may recall, this is called the cochlea, and the cochlea is responsible for helping us here, right? And I've done a whole video on the cochlea. And then we have this portion that's here. And this portion is called the vestibular apparatus. So this whole thing in here is going to be my vestibular apparatus. And this vestibular apparatus is gonna be made up of two parts. One part is these round, somewhat circular structures which we call the semicircular canals, which we'll talk about in another video. Okay, and then we have basically what we call the otoliths, or I'm just gonna call the, the vestibule right now. So we have the vestibule, okay? And the vestibule is what we're gonna be concentrating on today. So basically this round circle in here. So when we look at the vestibule, it's made up of two parts, which are called the otoliths, and some, some people call them the otoliths. There's two otoliths. There's the utricle and there's the saccule. Now, your utricle is going to be responsible for linear motion. Like if you're driving the car going forward and stopping and things such as that. So this um, is going to be responsible for horizontal motion or you can put linear, right? But I think horizontal is just a little bit easier to remember. And the saccule is going to be responsible for vertical motions going up and down, okay? And so that's going to be the two structures we're talking about. And together, like I said, some books will call these the otoliths, and I'll tell you why in just a minute, okay? So let's take a look at this. First, we're gonna look at the vestibule. The vestibule on the outside is made up of bone. So I'm just gonna draw a circle to show the vestibule, right? And this would be the outer part of the vestibule. This is, this is gonna be the bony part. And then on the inside, we're gonna have something called the inner membranous uh, membrane. On the inner membranous, I'm sorry, labyrinth. Okay, and the difference between, now this is just a membrane that's on the inside. Then inside of here, I'm gonna have my utricle and my saccule right, and different parts of this. So, now, here's the thing about this, is on the outer part here, we have a fluid called perilymph. And then on the inside, we are going to have a fluid called endolymph. Okay, so I'm gonna have my endolymph, is gonna be all in here. Now, the difference between perilymph and endolymph is paralymph has more sodium than potassium, and endolymph has more potassium than sodium. If we were to look at it right here, I'm gonna look, we'll look at the structure right here, and this is going to be my utricle now. So let's go ahead and take a look at the utricle, all right? And you'll notice there's a few things on here. This all would be surrounded by my endolymph, okay? I don't have any, I'm not showing any endolymph drawn, but this would all be endolymph that's around in here, okay? And there's different parts to this. You can see we have these blocks that sit up here. These are gonna be calcium carbonate crystals. So this is calcium uh, carbonate crystals that are right there. And this is called otolith. <clears throat> it has some other names too, but I'm just gonna call it otolith. Um, and then in here, we have basically the autolithic membrane. Okay, so this is my autolithic membrane, and this is a gel-like substance. That we have here, okay? And then we have these things sticking up, right? And if you recall when we were doing herein, what we said is these are basically stereocilia. And then we have this tall one that's right here and we call this kinocilium. 
Okay, this, so this would be chondrocilium and all these would be stereocilia, okay? And then this part that's down in here with the hair cells is basically called the macula. So now, <clears throat> here's what's going to happen when we're in motion. I'm going to look at just these structures here themselves. Wait, before I get to that, this, these autolith actually put pressure down on these structures here, on the gel-like substances. And that's sending a signal. So we have a constant signal being sent to the brain. And by the way, these down here are the nerves. Okay, and I don't have, a, I don't have any drawn, but these are supporting cells that would all be right in here. Right, these would be basically be hair cells again. So this here would be a hair cell. Right, and then on top of the hair cell, you have my stereocilia, my kinocilia. This here, and here, and here, and here, and here are my supporting cells. Okay, so that's the anatomy of this. These nerves here are going to go to make my vestibular nerve, and what it's going to do is it's going to meet up with the cochlea, and it's going to become the vestibular cochlear nerve, also known as cranial nerve number eight. But let's take a look at how this works. I'm just going to take a section here, and we're going to look at it over here real quick. So let's go like this, and this is one of my hair cells that's right here, okay? You can see we have neurotransmitters in there, right? This again, these are my stereocilia that are right here. Right, so these are all my stereocilia. And then this, again, is my kinocilium. These here are proteins called tip links. Okay, and this is what's going to happen now. Let's say that I am in a car and I'm driving, right? And all of a sudden the person hits the brakes and my head whips forward. When my head whips forward, these stereocilia are going to go toward this kinocilium. Okay, so the stereocilia go towards the kinocilium. When the stereocilia go toward the kinocilium, what's gonna happen is these tip links will pull on the stereocilia and they are going to open the sodium potassium gates. When they open the sodium potassium gates, what's going to happen now is uh, potassium is going to start rushing in to the hair cell. But not only is potassium gonna start rushing into the hair cell, I am also going to get calcium rushing into the hair cell. So inside of here now, I am going to start to get a whole bunch of potassium, and I am going to get a whole bunch of calcium. And here's what's gonna happen now. If you recall, we have something called snare proteins, which are attached to the vesicles that hold neurotransmitters. They're also attached to the cell membrane. So what's gonna happen is my calcium is going to help these proteins attach to each other, and it's going to help this vesicle to fuse with the cell membrane. When it does that, this neurotransmitter can come out. This neurotransmitter is going to be called glutamate. Okay. Sometimes acetate will be on there too, but for the most part, it's going to be glutamate. So my glutamate now is going to come down into here, and then this is my nerve. That's my vestibular nerve. And now it's going to send a signal to the brain. Okay. That's if I'm going forward, because as I go forward, again, those go towards the kinocilium. This would also happen, let's say you're sitting in a car and somebody goes backwards real fast and you jerk forward, right? Because you're doing that head flexion, right? So as long as these are going towards the kinocilium, I am going to have, I'm going to increase the impulses going towards the brain. Now, on the opposite side, let's say I'm sitting in a car, right? And someone takes off real fast, right? Or you're on a roller coaster, one of those roller coasters that go, they take off and they just go real fast in the very beginning. And your head jerks back. Or if I'm just simply going into head extension. What's going to happen now is these stereocilia move the opposite way. So I'm going this way, but the stereocilia are going to be going away from the kinocilium. When the stereocilia go away from the kinocilium, right? When they go away, what's going to happen is I am going to get a decrease in the amount of signals that are sent to the brain. The reason being is these sodium potassium gates are not going to open. So now I don't have sodium or potassium coming in, and because of that, 
This vesicle does not bond to the cell membrane, and therefore no signal sent. So now I get a decrease, because remember I said we have signals going all the time to the brain from the structure. What happens is as we go, as, as the head goes back, we stop sending signals or we decrease them. When there's a decrease in signals, the brain now realizes that, hey, I'm moving forward, okay? When you stop real quick and you get head flexion, these open the sodium, pota uh, the, so, uh, the potassium rushes in and the calcium rushes in, right? And then that's gonna cause this to be released and send signals to the brain. So that's it for how we do linear motion. Really quick for uh, vertical motion, just take this and turn it on its side, right? So if this was on its side, let's just move this down just a little bit right, more right here. And if I were to go on my side now, this is my kinocilium. There's my stereocilia, right? So what's gonna happen? If I go up, these are actually gonna go the opposite direction toward the kinocilium. If they go towards the kinocilium, I'm going to get an increase in impulses to the brain. Right? That's if I'm going up. That's if I'm going up. If I go down, the opposite's gonna happen. These are gonna move away from that kinocilium and when they move away from the kinocilium, the impulses to the brain are decreased. So therefore the brain realizes that you're not, um, you're going down, okay? And again, so the, ver the ver uh, neutral code would be straight up and down. This would be my saccule that's actually on its side, okay? So that's it for vertical and linear motions in, in the vestibule. And thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please hit the like and subscribe button. And we will catch you next time when we do the semicircular canals. Thank you.